Out of Heroes Heart, this is Kyle Ferguson. Today I'm sitting down with Madara's Lili, a Lili game. This was 30k's match versus Granite Gaming, Game 3, Tomb of the Spider Queen. Madara, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Glad to be here. Well, thanks for picking Lili, a healer <laughs> that is relatively unseen. And here we are on Tomb of the Spider Queen, like the lane clear map. How did this come up in draft and why was it first pick? Yeah, so um, the the first problem is you said thanks for picking Lili a healer. We haven't seen much. Lili's not really a healer. Is okay. The thing. She's okay. more of a DPS. <laughs> uh, right. her, she does have green numbers, but compared to her other, you know, healers in the healer category, her her burst healing especially is quite low, without uh, her ultimate a thousand cups or whatever. So she's a lot better at doing like consistent damage because of her, her really low cooldowns and her mana costs as well as her fast feet, which just give her CDR on those things. So she's really only viable in double support if if you want to pick her as a, kind of a healer, which is what we did here. And, and double support ball has always been a really good comp, so that's probably mostly why this worked. But how her healing essentially is, is that it only heals one person and it's kind of a long cooldown for how much it heals for except for her water dragon which also is really low healing numbers so uh if you pair it with something like ariel who has really long cooldown uh burst heals it makes it a lot easier to keep your team alive which in this comp all we really have to do is keep our vol alive and let her you know kill them all okay so several questions about that yeah lily only in double support and she's gonna bring that cleanse that can be really important at least in some builds we'll see if you end up going that uh-huh with ariel yeah. here you now have a double heal situation but you don't have the lane clear you might expect with like that we need a mage kind of storm league mentality we have mm -hmm. a vala that is going uh, a multi-shot build so is that where you're making all the recovery or is uh, ariel lily like not actually that bad a lane clear yeah, so double support naturally has really low wave clear just because of uh, supports having low macro impact. So that's probably part of the reason for Vala W build to start clearing those waves a bit. But it's also a decent amount of the reason we picked Mei because she's one of like the two tanks that has actually a pretty decent wave clear. Oh, interesting. And I see the level yeah. one talent there, Ice Storm, which does help mm -hmm. out with that a bit. Yeah, it definitely makes it a lot easier. So this is probably why we were losing a lot in the early game, is because we just have very little wave count tomb, which is always a problem. But it's kind of expected with the double support comp. You just kind of have to hold out until you can get to the point of the game where you're just team fighting a lot more. On the enemy side, is there anything that you feel counters your double support draft? If, if Lili is only viable in double <laughs> support, it should be something they saw coming being so early on. I, I would agree they, they could have countered a lot harder. I think KT is the only character really on their team that is good into it. I think uh, Tracer is pretty bad into double support because her whole gimmick is one-shotting backliners, which is hard when they've got two healers. Sure. Uh, I think Blaze is kind of a null factor. He's just always good. Uh, Tyrael having no CC makes it really hard to kill anyone against double support, which is why I was actually able to have such a... A good time is Lily this game. I was really unpressured, so I was kind of just running around on their face the entire game, trying to proc my fast feet. Oh, that's so an I interesting think, uh, point. Yeah. So fast feet becomes it, more viable when there are less CCs because you get to take the damage, enjoy the benefits without actually being locked down. Away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So, so that's actually something that surprised me is we first picked Lily and they, they picked actually almost nothing that's good into it, so... I think it was probably just that they haven't played against Lili in a long time, so they weren't really ready for the pick, but yeah, it was interesting. So you mentioned counters for healing. What would those be? I mean, I know we got like Varian with, you know, healing reduction and you got Ana grenades, but neither one of those have really shown themselves much in CCL this season. Mm, yeah, so I think uh, if we're looking at double support at least, characters like Deckard, are really good. Um, Ana as well, but she's a little bit harder to play and more counterable. But with the Emerald, Deckard's really good at uh, with his anti-healing and his huge uh, AoE CCs. Because as double support, you're normally clumping up really hard to like kind of stick together and not die. So anything that's like a large AoE is going to be pretty good into you. Uh, like Mephisto, for example, I'd say he's the best character you can run into double support. 
because he just destroys in team fights where everyone's clumped up together because he gets his free resets and he does insane amounts of damage. Interesting. Huh. I mean, maybe not in our home games, the <laughs> Mephistos are never yeah. quite that good, but I see the KT thing you're talking about, particularly into Ariel. You want to group up for the heals. You got mm -hmm. bombs on everybody. No one wants to group up and the heals don't quite work out in the same value. Yeah, I remember actually saying at like the start of this game, uh, watch out for the chain bombs. That's the only thing that's going to make us lose. Because if we are just all grouped up trying to get the Ariel heal and we end up blowing each other up, it's going to be really bad. Is the KT a complete counter to the Ariel in that way? Is there another healer? If they stacked more into that with the Mephisto, you would have gone instead of Ariel? Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, I'd say KT is really good into Ariel just because of... Uh, the, the clumping mechanic, I'd say almost any mage is pretty good that way, like a, a Gul'dan even, or any any long range mage that can just punish the, the clump anytime they try to get together for a heal, because it's, it's pretty telegraphed. If you see the Ari at full hope and everyone's walking towards each other, then uh, shoot your spells at them, essentially. So here we have a pass on the let's go, the cleanse. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned, you know, Tyrael over there, so maybe not as many CCs that would concern you. Um, yeah. But is that something you coordinated with the Ariel? Does that force her to go towards Crystal Aegis? Or was this a communication with the team or just purely draft based? Yeah, well, I, I told the team like they've got zero CCs before level 10 and the level 10, they've got like Light Bomb um, uh, as well as Blaze, I suppose. And I said, do you think we need cleanse for that? And they said, follow your dreams. And, <laughs> and the other level seven da talent does way more damage. And I mean, I'm DPS Lily, so. I've got one choice here. Okay, Mass Vortex. Let's go and take yeah. a look at that. We got to increase the number of enemies hit by Blinding Wind from two to three. Blinding Wind deals 75% additional damage if all three enemy hit are heroes. All right, so yeah. you're planning to be in the middle of the whole enemy team then. Essentially, and then this talent actually does a ton of damage if you get the uh, the conditional proc. You'll do like 10% of a, a Tracer's max HP, which is kind of insane. Oh, okay. Maybe a little more than that, actually. Let's look at your earlier build here that's come together. You're doing a Cloud Serpent build. Yeah, it's so the the reason for this, I mean, there's two reasons, actually. I think this is probably one of Lily's best builds just because of uh, it, it gets so much damage and healing out by the late game that it feels like the only one that's viable. Her, her Q talents are just really, really weak for what other healers get for their healing abilities. And her E build is just tied to an extraordinarily long cooldown and they're also pretty weak with their conditions so this feels like the only one that actually does much and the second reason uh i mean i love chromie and deathwing and all like dragons really so i i have to go this build actually <laughs> it's in my just, contract just good theming all right hey i can yeah. respect that absolutely absolutely so this puts a dragon on you as well as allies. Do you have a rhythm? Is this kind of like a Malfurion thing where you're like, I got to get the Cloud Serpent on you and then you in this certain order? Yeah, there is um, a rhythm. Actually, it's it's kind of the same rhythm as all your your mechanics with Lili. So let me preface it by saying I don't think Lili is that hard of a character to play. But how I'm doing with the Wind Serpent is if it's off cooldown, I'm pressing it on the first person I see. Similarly to most of my buttons, if it's not on cooldown, then I press the button. Okay, so spamming, spamming. Yes. Uh, ideally, I put the Cloud Serpent on myself because I, I feel like I'm the best one to use it because I know what's going on with it. But if I see my, my Vala under duress or maybe Cattle's going in there, I'll drop one on him. I'm sure he won't notice it, but you know, I'm sure it'll do something like a small number in the fight somewhere. So it's not really a Stukov sort of booger situation where it's like, here, ally, now you need the game knowledge to spread this around properly. You think of Cloud yeah. Serpent as something that you will maintain. You will use an ally when they're in range, but otherwise don't, never expect them to actually make use of it. Yeah, I, I don't need them to use the brain power or time of day to really understand what this thing does. <laughs> uh, I've got that under control. Cool. Excellent. You ended up grabbing that water dragon as well. And you mentioned that jugs can kind of transform you into a pseudo healer but that's not why you would take Lili then yeah so jugs is um one of the best burst healing ults in the game uh only downside is it can get cc'd however that's not really a problem here but we also have the ariel so if if my vala is getting dashed at and i want to jugs her there's a chance that we overlap and i press jugs and legacy presses Aegis at the same time 
which is not really worth. And I also think Water Dragon is actually one of the, the better support ults in the game because it's it's a really good engage, actually. It does a ton of damage, and it's a huge AoE slow. So I think that's pretty good for us here for what we want. Now, this is based on your location to the hero. It's always the closest hero to you? Yes. Uh, for the Jugs? Uh, for the Water Dragon. Yeah, for the Water Dragon, it's the closest enemy hero, yeah. And you can kind of... um do some cool things with it to try to retarget it by like walking kind of in a circle around enemies to get other people to be closer. Uh, you can also do a cool trick that I did later this game where while they're in your range you press the water dragon and then you walk out of range and then as it's about to drop you just tap back in and they don't even see it coming. Oh, because the little channel spell effect no longer is upon yeah, them. Yeah, it'll go away for a bit and then suddenly as it's about to drop they just got a dragon in their face. That's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. so we're definitely seeing the, the hit me a little bit with the fast speed going on. You got this mass vortex for the damage. You're already going to be in the middle of everybody. And then level four, you grab the Wind Serpent. Cloud Serpent grants the bearer 10% increased movement speed. Casting Blinding Wind increases this bonus to 20% for three <clears> seconds. Yeah, this uh this entire talent's just really good for the W build because uh, movement speed lets you... I mean, movement speed is one of the most OP thing in any MOBA, so that's really good. Uh, but also the passive is really nice. It increases the Wind Serpent's attack speed. And once you get up to level 16, where the Wind Serpent heals you for max HP percent every time it attacks, that's just more net healing, which is really good for someone like a, a Liam or a Cattle who has a huge HP bar. Interesting. So when we talked earlier about throwing on Vala when she's actually engaged, this level four talent makes it so it's just a straight up buff. And then you might blinding win maybe slightly pointlessly in the back to get them a runaway. Yeah, uh, slightly. It, it would be a really good with another DPS because of for that exact reason. Uh, Vala has her hatred though, so she normally won't need it. And I don't think it stacks either. But if I give it on legacy, for example, for that reason, then yeah, he'll be able to run away like really easily. Level 13, Lightning Serpent. The attacks now bounce hitting two additional targets and healing so for 18 so how does this work then this healing is replacing the other healing that would happen so it's not stacking necessarily with the original healing amount uh it actually does stack so so if the wind serpent like spits at something and you get healed for like 30 or whatever and then the bounces you'll get healed for the each of the bounces as well so it almost effectively doubles the amount of healing you get from each wind serpent proc but it's also just some nice poke damage as well Okay, so rather than being a percent, it's actually listed as the 19 healing there and the damage yeah, yeah, directly. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't so... do the it doesn't stack the percents. Perfect. So the attack bounces about. How how does that play in to the blessing of Yulon? Cloud Serpent grants the bear 10% increased healing received and heals them for an additional 0.5% of their max health each time it attacks. Oh, so since the attack is what's being tracked, not the yeah, bounces. Yeah, so it's only the first spit, yeah, not the bounces. So it's only going to be the 0.5%, but it is still a, a nice little bit of bonus healing. Okay. Is there any talent then that you would go different at 13 or 16 here? Or not having a Stitches, not having a May? Um, well, I think her 13 talents in general, uh, those are all the, the cup ones, right? Or no, that's the 16 talents. So level 13, I think that uh, the the Gale Force, which is the increased blind duration, uh, it's pretty niche. If you're into like a lot of auto attackers, it can be okay, but it's only one extra second. So you're really just getting rid of one more auto from whoever you're getting it on. I think Hindering Winds is okay. It essentially doubles your slow on your E, which makes it nice for, uh, for setting up engages kinda. But also, it's not that big of a slow for a level 13 talent. Uh, honestly, I think this entire talent here is pretty weak. So it doesn't matter too much what you go. I just like Lightning Serpent a lot because uh, it's it essentially doubles the amount of healing you do from Water Serpent, which is pretty good, actually. And then level 16, any of these viable, the cup talents? Yeah, so I don't really like Lily's Q build just because of how conditional all of the talents are, and that's the same with this talent here. Uh, both of these Q talents have like either a condition or a negative, which makes it kind of hard to get value out of sometimes. I'd rather just, you know, my W always get the value that I'm trying to have it do. So if you are going 
like not W build, then yeah, you're probably gonna go one of these talents. Whichever one you need, if if you need more AOE healing, like you're trying to heal both your guys, or if you need more burst healing because they're more of a one shot comp, then that depends on which one you're gonna take. But I think they're pretty uh, low tier talents, especially for level 16. So what happened in that situation? Was that just the stack of CCs that kind of countered you guys right where Vala lives? Yeah, so that was us chasing into them too far with our comp. We really want to, you know, stand back and let Stitches get hooks, let them come into us, protect our Vala while she shoots them. And then we all chased right through a bush and got triple stunned by a KT, which is really bad. So uh, that's kind of that thing where we're all clumped up trying to... <laughs> trying to heal our, each other, and we get uh, countered by the AoE, uh, which is really good into double sport. If you just have huge AoEs that kind of try to hit everything you can, then that sometimes happens. A quote I hear a lot about double support is, we want long fights. Long fights, everybody. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, so that means you want to play very safe with your positioning. Don't, like... You don't want to get one shot, because if you don't get one shot, then your healers will be able to heal you back up. Because we have two of them, so we're going to be really good at doing that. But if uh, if the fights are really fast, and your healers don't have time to like get as much value as they normally could, because our healers are both like cooldown based, so obviously the more healing we can get out in a fight, the better of a chance we'll have to win it. So if, if me and Legacy can only get like one heal each during a fight, then we're not really giving that much value. But if we can like the fight goes really long and we're each getting like a minute worth of healing then that's everyone's health bars like restored a couple times which is really hard to to kill if you're the enemy team so in this situation with vala who is sustain and going to do more damage the longer the fight goes are you kind of thinking in like a kite poke kind of way or do you want really chaotic fights where everyone's targeting something different on the enemy team uh well with double support you really want the fights to be more orderly you you just want to Everyone pretty much on your team wants to be looking at your hyper carry, which is what Vala is here. She's your hyper carry. Everyone on your team wants to be staring at her and making sure she's alive. And if, you know, we're in danger, everyone walks left together. That way we can keep each other safe while Vala just dishes out damage. So here on Lili, are you operating as almost a third tank in front of Vala? Or do you want to be in the back ready to catch something? Uh, Well, with Lili, you have like your... You're kind of always fast because of how fast your feet are, really. So I'm kind of moving around between whatever I need to. So if the fight is just starting and I need to kind of be the engager, I'll be ahead of everyone. But if, like you see here, everyone's going for cure, I'll step back and try to save his life if I can. Sure. All right, so in that situation, Water Dragon being a 45 or 50 second cooldown, it's decently short. It's going to be available every fight. You weren't casting mm -hmm. it in the early part of the fight. Later on, though, when Tracer got heavily involved, that's when you cast it. So when do you put out the water dragon? Yeah, so I think you uh, the best places to use water dragon, you either start with it or you end with it. So starting with it for an engage can be really good, especially if the enemy team is clumped up. Or if you end with it to chase like some more kills or to try to peel, because it is a humongous slow for a really long time. Like a 70% slow for four seconds, I think. So if, if the enemy team is trying to run away, then now they can't do that. And if they all clump up, you're just going to get huge value out of it. So it might as well press it now. So in general, in the middle maximum chaos, focus on double support and make sure that your carry is still doing their sustained damage. And as the fight ends, Water Dragon can be that finisher. Or yeah. it can help you get that early fight that, and that longer fight chasing someone down. Essentially. Level 20, you grab the double dragon here. And... Mm -hmm. That gives you a second water dragon after the first one hits. Any change uh, in your kind of strategy OP. here? Uh, well, yeah, now with double dragon, you want to be a lot more aggressive with it because I, I think this talent's actually insanely good. You just saw there, I ran into the middle of their whole team and killed one of them and started a fight because uh, it's a humongous slow twice, which really messes up a team's positioning and hurts them a lot. Uh, I think the other 20s, I think they're all pretty good except for the fast V one. Uh, Miss Weaver is really good with this W build because it procs off of each of the uh, W with auto attacks. So it's a lot of sustained healing, but we don't really need that since we have two healers already. And I think the Jugs level 20 is really good for burst save healing. 
if you kind of end up going down that road any yeah. advantage to shake it off even in an extreme situation i don't think so i think it's just always going to be worse than the other talents looks like there with double dragon it comes down but they can still get out of range of the second dragon i actually know the second dragon it pretty much picks a person and it's going to hit that person no oh interesting yeah so you could even get the first dragon out and then run for it if you needed to yeah yeah you can just run away very cool so looking at kind of the raw numbers your top damage <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i mean that's why i'm saying lily's a dps wow. also top healing but that's probably more than half that is self-healing if i had to be honest here sure sure padding out those numbers a bit yeah interesting okay well you can see your your lane clear and all being pretty weak there <laughs> but still i mean well above anduin's by a huge amount mm -hmm. so i mean that just means lily's op really is what i'm trying to show with this game fair enough so what completed the kills here was more of what cure was up to and ultimately yeah, later sure. on in the middle game you got to add to that with the water dragon but just a lot of chaos being in there even soaking damage that's not going into cure healing yourself up mm -hmm. and then just doing repeat gusts i mean i have to assume a lot of this damage is just coming over time from water dragons hitting for minuscule amount uh, yeah i mean the cloud serpents they're gonna be attacked with that level one it's pretty much always off cooldown so hitting for like 90 percent of the game on enemy heroes which is definitely going to add up oh fast speed activate cooldown refreshes an additional 75 percent faster okay so make sure you're taking a couple of random auto attacks at any point in this game did you ever see a flame strike and go "Ooh, <laughs> i want to stand in that <laughs> not a flame strike because uh if you get hit by a flame strike post 16 at least you're living bombed and now you're whole Life is in hell. Sure. But uh, definitely, like, if a trace is running around, I'm going up to her to eat a melee or two, maybe. Or if I see some ignited blaze oil, I'll step in that. So are there any extreme cases versus, like, a Tassadar where you'd be like, oh, I'll step a, I'll stick a little toe in that storm? Uh, if it's, like, a storm, yeah. But if it's a Q, you stay well away from that. Okay. Like, you only want to take a tiny bit of damage to proc it. So it sounds like in order to pull off this play style, you actually need a lot of game knowledge. You need to know the entire enemy team in order to take advantage of all the types of damage they're doing. Make sure you don't take too much. Uh, I'd say if you want to play it at the maximum efficiency, then probably. But I think, if I'm being honest, the hardest mechanical part of Lili is going outside and finding a cement brick to lay on top of your Q, W, and E. <laughs> well, thank you for the breakdown on Lili and, and sharing this awesome game with us and your top damage. Everyone, of course. Everyone watching here on Heroes Hearth, be sure to like, Subscribe, ring that bell for more learn to play content for Here's the Storm.